Ladies and uh, gentlemen, thank you for coming to today's press conference following the military committee meetings in uh, Chiefs of uh, Defense session. My name is Captain Tamminson. I am the uh, spokesperson of the chairman of the military committee. Uh, we will start off with the chairman, uh, General Bartels, briefly summing up the conclusions uh, of uh, yesterday's and today's meetings. He will be followed by Sakur, General Breedlove, describing the uh, operational takeaways and the uh, latest uh, developments. And finally, General Palomeros will talk about Allied Transformation uh, Command's implied work preparing NATO for the future challenges. After the uh, brief statements, uh, there will be time for your questions. General Bartels. Thank you, and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this uh, press conference. Let me start this press conference by giving you an overview uh, of the outcome of the second NATO Chief of Defense meeting of 2014. Uh, given the proximity of the summit and preceding ministerial meetings, the significance of recent events in Ukraine, and the shift of NATO's posture from being engaged in operations to being prepared for operations, this gathering has been extremely important for us. It has allowed the Chief of Defense to share their perspectives and provide clear and unequivocal military committee advice to ministers and heads of states and governments on key summit issues. Our view is that the global security situation is becoming increasingly unpredictable, unstable, and interconnected, as demonstrated by unilateral change of borders, under use of force, and the following unrest in Ukraine. Recent events there, in Syria and the Sahel region, to name but a few, have reinforced the need for NATO to be ready for a wide range of potential threats, both near and far abroad. Be these threats conventional or asymmetrical, the days of binary and traditional solutions are gone. We cannot set the clock back. We are facing a new security architecture which we need to address. The challenges are global and multifaceted, non-traditional, and we must address them as such. NATO's credibility and thereby its capacity for deterrence, collective defense, and crisis management is dependent on a demonstrable capability, readiness, and usability of our military force. We need to make ensure coherence between the available forces and how we deploy them. In other words, we need to ensure that readiness translates into responsiveness. For this reason, NATO's Chief of Defense agreed to reinforce the education, training, exercise, and evaluation program. They also agreed that NATO and its member nations need to address capability shortfalls, training and readiness through investment, activity, and cooperation. And certainly, investments cost money, but as the NATO Secretary General has said, the price for insecurity is much more expensive, and we all agree on that. From a military perspective, partners have a great deal to offer, and we should continue to focus on strengthening relationships and interoperability, especially with those partners who express their will to operate alongside NATO. Indeed, we have had extensive discussion with our partners in different formats, ISAF, Resolute Support Mission, and with Georgia and Ukraine, and we all agreed on the benefit of our military-to-military -military corporations in terms of interoperability and mutual understanding. Of course, we need to work hard to maintaining these relationships in the coming years, but I'm confident we will reach this goal. 
Now I want to hand over the floor to General Breedlove and afterwards to General Palomeros, who will give you an update on operation and transformation issues, respectively. Phil. Uh, 